Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q and A podcast, and we're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, awesome sauce, man. Look at our team. A great season. So many things we got to cover. We want to say thank you guys for tuning in to the show all year long. We'll let you know if we'll have a show next week or not. But we're gonna have more stuff this off season, but. Um, going into the Super Bowl show, my name is Jason Avant. I'm here with my main man, Q. Say what's up to the people. What's up, man? Hey, great time to be alive, man. Oh, great time to be an Eagles fan. Uh, I'm excited, man. Excited. <laughs> Definitely a great time to be an Eagles fan. I'll tell you guys this. I couldn't be more proud of a team. It literally, they win this game that's coming up in two weeks will go down as the best Eagles team in history. Oh, yeah. And the most talented team uh, and the best team in, in Eagles history. And, 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 it's, and it's great to see, to see a team grow through the regular season without many bumps or bruises, blow through the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if the Chiefs are no match for this team. I wouldn't oh, be yeah. surprised at all if this wasn't a close game. Not saying that it won't, but I wouldn't be surprised at all. So I'll say this to start. Thank you guys for tuning into the show the entire year. Thank you to Adam and to Jeff and to Josh, to Evan, to everyone that's responsible behind the scene. And most of all, congratulations and thank you um, to all the fans. Congratulations for a great year supporting the team and being able to run down Broad, Broad Street, climb a few poles. <laughs> Get a little crazy. Congratulations on that part and for your team. And thank you guys for tuning in to this show. Have any questions, send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. Q, let's get right into it, man. Um, we're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's on the Super Bowl. Like this is the second time in five years. The trajectory of the franchise is totally change in the way we view things the way the city believes we feel like it belongs to us like talk about how we talk about the organization and how it changed from when you were here until now oh uh, man it's it's i wouldn't say night and day but um just the overall um aspect of the way the op that the team operates has been tremendous i mean we're talking about an organization from top to bottom that's had, you know, Andy Reid, great, great head coach, Doug Peterson, very good head coach. Now Nick Seriani looking like, a, you know, is going to be a very, very good head coach. Um, and so it, it really starts at the top and just seeing um, the progress of this team in such a short amount of time has been tremendous. And it just goes to show you that all the decisions that they're making, all of the um, the, the choices and, and everything from head coaching and, and, and assistant coaching hiring, to, you know, uh, acquisitions in the draft and, and through free agency. It just shows that everything is really harmonious and working together. And it, and there's a plan there. And it really, really is a beautiful thing to see. And uh, we, we've all had a, our doubts at times. Obviously, there's, they've missed on a couple of picks. But, um, you know, just to see this, this team, this organization, year after year after year have so much success has been amazing to watch. And, and definitely – at a different level than when I was playing and when we were playing. So it's, it's, you know, kudos to Mr. Lurie and, and Howie and all those guys. It's, it's just a tremendous thing to see. Yeah, it definitely is. I, I agree with that, you know, wholeheartedly. Uh, I think the fans believe and the city and the organization, the way that it's talked about. And if you just like take the time out to, to listen to the people that have the microphone, they're not overly excited that they're going to the Super Bowl. The team wasn't overly excited. They were happy, but they weren't overly ex excited. You've seen Mr. Lurie, Howie, everyone talk about one more game. This is not like the end-all, be-all. We're not excited just to go. We want to win it all because we know what that feels like. And I think that's a testament to where the organization has grown to, where it's not enough to win or to get there. It's enough to 
but not enough to win one Super Bowl is, 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 is we want to continue to win multiple. So um, I, I think that's a great thing. Like throughout this offseason, there's been a lot of moves to get us to the best roster in football. And when you break down this roster, it's, it's, it's tough to find anybody that can compete, anyone yeah. that can compete with this roster. What was the most impactful move this offseason? And let's think about all of them, right? You're talking about um, A.J. Brown, huge move, yeah. like huge move. Hassan Reddick, huge move. Bradbury, first team off, huge move. Garner <laughs> Johnson, adapting to, and he came down with bad intentions this week too. When yeah. we talk about, he, he, he missed a few tackles, but I didn't care that he missed a few tackles because his mentality was right. And you knew that it eventually it was going to work out. And, and we talked about that. And yeah. it was the most aggressive I've ever seen. Yeah, he's coming yeah, downhill. So, yeah, he was coming downhill with bad <laughs> intentions. I loved it. <laughs> I, I I love that. Even when he missed the tackle, I was like, I, I can't be mad at you. I, I was happy. I was smiling. I mean, look, look at him from that from that to when he started with the Lions game. Oh my gosh! Like go back and watch the Lions <laughs> game of Garner yeah. Johnson, and then watch him this past game, the first game of the season, and then this NFC Championship game, and how aggressive he was toward the line of scrimmage and filling the holes and trying to tackle people total it like a total different human in a, like it was crazy i was like i was happy that, that made me happy you know like little things make you happy and you know yeah. happy in that game i'm gonna get kind of on a tangent how they executed the backed up pump from the one dude oh yes i was nervous know, about that when it was when when, when Jalen didn't dump it down to the running back and threw the aj over his head i was like oh this is about to get blocked <laughs> And, a, yep. and like the punter took four steps. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> One step and get that out. I was nervous, man. I was I was tripping watching that too. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, all right. So 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 you got Kaiser White, you got a lot of people this 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 um you got Nandamakan Sue, you have, you know, Limbo Joseph. Joseph. You got a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. What, so, who, who has the most impact? The most impactful. <laughs> this is tough one, man, because my man Hassan has been nothing but a wrecking ball all season. But I'm gonna have to say, it. what's that? He got 20 sacks at, at to this point. That's crazy. That is That's insane, man. In playoffs. That's crazy. I'm gonna have to say though, for me, the, the biggest impact was AJ Brown. Um, his presence on the field creates so much of a, a worry for opposing defensive coordinators that it opens up everything else in this offense. And now you couple that with, you know, Devontae outside and, you know, Quez and then Pascal inside and you got Goddard inside. Just that one player, A.J. Brown, game-breaking type player, you know, just tremendous. So for me, because I know what it's like, you're playing against a defense. I mean, you're on defense and you're playing against a team like this with all these weapons and all these different, um, you know, blocking schemes and, and pass schemes coming at you. So for me, I think the A.J. Brown pickup was probably the the most impactful. Not by much, because I, like I said, Hassan Reddick was a huge impactful um, addition. But A.J. Brown for me, man, it was, it's, it's wow. he edges them out there. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, when you look at the playoff, what Hassan Reddick is doing, you like, but the thing that I, I think about the most is that, how much would the offense be without Hassan? How much? How much different would the defense be without Hassan Reddick? I still think that they would generate pass rush. Yeah, it won't be the same. Yeah. But Brandon Graham, Brandon Graham would have more, you know, stuff like that. Like you figure out. I don't think they would be. I don't know. Q. It's tough, man. Like I said, it's, it's, it's one close. of those. It's one of those two. And then Bradbury's all pro. Yeah, I did not like, know that either. Yeah, he made, yeah, that's and that's the real thing. That's not the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, so okay. This it's is tough, man. I, I would have to I would have to say AJ Brown. As I would have to agree with you and say AJ Brown, just because the growth of Jalen Hurts, he helped to exp expedite that. Um 
if you take him off the offense, out of the offense, it's not the same at all. And it's and you can and you can add more people to the box. I think him being on the field, like you said, opens up much more. It keeps Goddard from being double teamed. It keeps an extra body off Jalen Hurts. It gives Devontae Smith the second best corner. Mm-hmm. Like it does a bunch of different things. And he can beat your number one guy. You know, so it it, it just it, it makes them unguardable. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but that's tough. It, it's a tough one. It, yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's hard to pick one. Can we can we pick more than one? Can we just say yeah. one for offense and one for defense? There you go. Yeah. I would say AJ <laughs> Brown one, Reddick two, Bradbury. Bradbury three, and then Gardner Johnson four. Yeah. I can deal with that. Yeah, that might not have to be like that. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts. His leadership has an like how he, how he's impacted the team, his growth. Can you even fathom where we are in comparison to what the season ended like in 2022? Down in Tampa, getting mm-hmm. destroyed, being exposed didn't throw the ball well, played a really, really bad game until going to the Super Bowl this year in one year. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, his leadership and it's everyone, everyone talks about, everyone talks about leadership. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the most important things that I think a lot of people don't understand about leadership is, um, it's a form of social influence, right? It's mm-hmm. you're influencing people around you to focus on a certain goal. And it's one thing to be like a manager and say this thing or say, do that, say, do this. But a, a, a real leader is someone that creates the vision and socially impacts the people around him to do better. And Everything I see about this guy, everything I hear him say, he lives it. And so he's he exudes all of that confidence, that focus, that men, that mentality, that dog mentality. After this game, you would think that he was you would think that they they lost the game, right? The way he was so calm and collected, like mm-hmm. I just kept hearing him say, We got one more. We got one more. Yeah. We got one more. And like it it to some people, it might sound like just just talking points, or it might sound like he's just, um, you know, saying. But he really lives that stuff, right? And that that infects the rest of the team in a positive way. And so, his growth as a leader is exactly what this team needed, and exactly what is the complete opposite of, like for instance, a Carson Wentz, right? He's he's putting in the work. He's going out there. He's putting it on himself, and that's yeah. That's, and I think that's a huge reason why this team is so successful this day, today. Yeah. I, I'm listening to everything you say. I'm actually writing some stuff down. But his leadership is unparalleled. Um, it's just, it's, in my years of being around a guy, I don't know if I've been around a guy with such a gravitational pull where you want to root for him because you know what type of guy he is and you know how hard he works and you know how leadership is, has been like, he's been like raised with it. So Mm -hmm. it's something that he exudes, something that he is, he can't run from it, right? So people gravitate to him. Jason Kelsey loves him. And that's when I knew from being in the the building, how much Jason Jason Kelsey respected him. I was like, that's that's gonna be that 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 should be something, but I never thought that he would get to this point this fast. And and I was wrong because I didn't think with all of, and I'll say this, and, and most people won't admit to, you know, some of the stances that they had. One stance that I was wrong about with Jalen Hurts is I didn't think that Jalen Hurts would have enough time to correct a lot of things that he had going wrong. 
Did I believe that he could correct them? Yes, if he had sufficient time. So I thought that the clock could possibly run out before he was able to adjust to the NFL and be able to be able to hit a down the field target consistently, be able to throw accurate passes and be able to recognize defenses quickly. All those things, right? I, I didn't think that he could get it done so fast. Not only did he prove me wrong, he did it faster than I thought was was even un, like imaginable in my mind. Yeah. Right? Because this yeah. year he's shown so much. And it's not just me. It's a lot of people that Jalen Hurst is going to have the chance to say, hey, Mel Kuyper, kiss my ass. <laughs> National <laughs> analysts, all of you guys, kiss my ass. Nick Saban, kiss my ass. 31 <laughs> other teams, kiss my ass, right? So WIP, Fanatic, everyone in Philadelphia that questioned me, Gardner Minshew, um, Carson Wentz, all of y'all, kiss my ass. <laughs> like he's going to be able to say that. Once he wins this football game, and he can, he's definitely right, and he can own that, and we can all say that, oh, we believed in him 100% of the time. Listen, I believed in the type of person he was that he was eventually be able to get it done and be a good quarterback in this league. But I realized it would be this fast. I would be lying to you if I told you that it would happen this fast. And I'm glad, boy, am I glad that it that I was wrong in that in that stance. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. I mean. So, um, you know, so you got you got to give much respect, much respect to the growth. And he it's a tall task to go in there and, and compete with Patrick Mahomes. But we got you, but that's the thing. Jalen Hurst doesn't have to be Patrick Mahomes. Right. We just won a football game where we threw the ball for 121 yards. That's crazy. <laughs> it was a blowout. It's the first time in 40 years that a team was in the NFC championship and did not um that both that they did not score a touchdown, a passing touchdown. Neither team scored a passing touchdown. The first time in 40 years. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. It's been a long time since something like that happened. And that goes to show you that Jalen Hurts doesn't have to be perfect in order to win, especially when your roster is good. They're a great team. Jalen's down, somebody else is up. Jalen was throw a ball a little bit low, start the game off. A.J. Brown goes down and get it. Ball's a little high, Devontae Smith goes and get it. Up, we need a touchdown. Kelsey paves the way. Like, they're a complete team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I, it's, it's crazy, man. And, and, I didn't. I mean, that's crazy. That's a crazy stat when you really think about it. In forty years, like yeah. I, I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah, well, both well, both teams. That no, no, no team scored a touchdown. NFC championship. Uh, passing touchdown. NFC championship game. It, it, it just doesn't happen. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Now it was. It, you know why they they, you know, and that guy had to need a UC. He had a complete UCL tear. Purdy did. Complete. Yeah, I saw that today. Yeah. yeah. All right, Lane Johnson, Avante Maddox out there playing um, with major injuries. Uh, like, that does a lot for the team. Like, Lane's playing playing well to be injured. Avante wasn't running 100%. Like, he wasn't as fast as he normally is, but, but was out there giving his all. Like, he wanted to be out there. Like, that's a lot of lift. And then Gardner Johnson was even – like, everybody was aggressive on the back end up toward the line of scrimmage. It's like, everybody, we backing out. We – we got the whole band here today. <laughs> we, got, we got the whole band in today. Let's turn up. Let's rock out. What you think about that? Lady Johnson, the yeah, yeah, whole band back. That's it. I mean, that's what it's about. And, uh, we, you know, we we talk often about, oh, in, in our day, we would have did this, we would have did that. I mean, these guys are living it right now. And it shows that they want it. It shows, it shows that. Number one, like they're all in it together. It shows that the leadership and, and not to mention, I don't, I still don't think um Jalen's hundred percent, right? So he's playing nope. a little bit injured out there. So um, you know, when you're seeing guys fight through it, especially Lane, when you're seeing guys fight through it and do do whatever it has to take to get the job done, um, that that shows that they want it, right? And that shows that that um they're all in it together. They're all playing for each other. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a beautiful thing to see. You don't have any selfishness out there. You have guys that want it. And that's that's how you, number one, build a culture. That's how you win games. And that's how you, um, you know, win the championship. Yeah. I mean, essentially, that's what it is. You're, you're sacrificing parts. You're sacrificing yourself, your body, your health for the greater good, for the, the betterment of the team. And that's what it's all about. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, man. So 100%. I can dig it. And, and, uh, you know, Avante, he, like you say, man, he was showing me some stuff. Now, a lot, some of it was that the quarterback, you know, position was a little bit, you know, so they were playing, you know, with their, their ears pinned back because they couldn't really throw the ball, but yeah. uh, they were flying around, man. I, <laughs> they were, they were getting after it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It got cut loose, man. So, all right. So, you want to keep going on? Or you yeah, got you got a topic two. Mm-hmm. All right, so we go to topic two. 31, uh, the game ended 31 to seven. Are you surprised that the Eagles went heavy run? The 49ers were the number one rushing defense. Their passing defense was number 20. And I believe that it's been a long time. I think uh, the last 10 or so games or so, there hasn't been a 70-yard rusher on them. So it's, it was very, very a challenging defense to run on. So you didn't think that you would be able to. There, it was a little bit wet when I was there at the game at the beginning. It was starting to, you know, drizzle and things like that. So I'm pretty sure that kind of was in the coach's mind a little bit. But I'm not surprised that we leaned on it um, because Jalen was off a little bit this game. He wasn't he, – he didn't play his best game. He missed A.J. Brown down the middle of the field – um, not the middle of the field, but on the outside. Devontae Smith, the ball was left short. Quez, the balls were left short on a go route. Um, Pasco had a ball on third down that if he had put it on the front pad, it would have been a catch, but he was in the back. Pad, so he gets the ball knocked down. Like there was multiple throws that he could have made to kind of change this game. And But the thing that I love about Jalen is that Jalen understood what needed to happen. With this team, just don't turn the ball over. Yeah. Right. Do, mm-hmm. do your best not to turn the ball over. And we got a shot because our defense is going to play really well and um, they got nobody to really block Hassan Reddick. So when you consider the elements and then you consider that the quarterback wasn't completing his normal um, high percentage when it comes to um, completions and targets, I think that you had to lean on the run game. And I just thought once they saw that the double team was a winner, and once they saw, they figured out that, okay, Nick Bosa, whoever's responsible, Jayla, um, Jalen has him no matter what. They're not going for a read. They're not doing anything. Once they figured that out, it was over. Yep. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it took, it took a second to figure it out. It took a quarter and a half to figure yeah. it out. But once, once they figured that out, it was done. It, it was done for them. And right. they still did a good job, you know, because the Eagles didn't go crazy on them. I think the Eagles had 148 rush, and they, they normally, in a situation like that, I have freaking 250 or 300. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think too, to add to that, I think that the game, the game plan, and we'll get into it a little bit later, but I think the game plan that um, the Niners had was they weren't going to let, they weren't going to let the, the passing game um, really, become a factor i think they i think they said hey we're gonna play cover two we're gonna pick and choose our spots when we move in cover one or cover three but for the most part we're not gonna let them get one-on-ones on us outside very often and when they do run the ball we're gonna play fast and aggressive and get after it um and like you said they and we'll talk about it but um certain people had certain responsibilities and um we're just gonna like it this way so um one thing i did notice early in the game the double the double mug blitzes right so not not blitz but mm-hmm. the they put the two the show the two backers in in the uh, a gap and he did almost throw a pick and I, it was really early in the game um fred warner bailed out at the last second and I, when i saw that i was like hmm like is this going to be like this the entire game where they're yeah. doing all these exotic looks it's and on third. I think a little bit, yeah. I think a little bit. Jalen was a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say rattled, but I think he was uh, thinking a little bit much. I think mm. a bit too much. I think he was 
not re his normal reactive self. And I think that probably had a little bit to play on his down the field throws, maybe second guessing things and short arming it a little bit. So mm -hmm. after him experiencing it, because I guarantee you against the Chiefs, you're going to see those double A double A uh, looks. With facts, yeah. yeah. Facts definitely going to see that. So hopefully now he's got one look at it in a couple weeks. He'll have another look and he'll be ready for it. So. Yeah, that, those double mugs, they got they got to have something for it. And um, because yeah. Bags is definitely going to do it and bring that cover four behind it too when he when he back out of it. Yep. You know, so what I would say, and I, the last thing I'll say about that, what I think what used to mess us up when we ran the double leg gap blitz. So what they do is who so they put the two double a gaps right, and then you see Kelsey, he'll point out uh, fifty eight to Mike or you know Warner's the Mike or or this green law is the mic, right? So that means we're counting him as the slide. So we're going to turn to him. And then the other guy back pops out. So they're actually in the A-gap. So they're hearing him say that. So what we used to do is we used to say, two guys in the A-gap, whoever you point to, you drop out, right? And so I, I, that's what I saw in that first play. They mm -hmm. pointed to Warner and then he dropped out. So the way that you, teams used to uh, – um, counteract that counteract that if the guy tries to drop out they they used to grab the guy right so if Warner's the guy that he, that um if yeah. Warner's the linebacker that's pointed to and he's dropping Kelsey's got to grab him so he can't get out mm. so that's yeah, one that, of the that, one that'd things be, that, that'd be, yeah, that's, that is one because he because he went all the way into the line of scrimmage like it yeah. was like he was rushing and then he popped out he took three <laughs> steps forward and then it was like oh <laughs> that was rough normally it's like a show he was, yeah. and he was, I'm rushing. And then yeah. he was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> That's a tough blitz. That's a tough one. Yeah. So sorry about the long winded. Uh, oh, no, you're there. good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Um, Let's talk about the, the fourth, the fourth and three catch. How crucial was that, that fourth and three catch on the opening drive? <clears throat> and then also AJ Brown's uh, 11 yard slam on the third down blitz. Talk about those two plays and how, uh, how they affected the game. I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about AJ Brown. Um, that yeah, that third that third down catch on a dig route over the middle that was very low. He looked both them catches look like look look like your boy. I ain't gonna finish. Both them <laughs> catches look like your boy. I'm saying hey. I, I, you know like I you know. <laughs> hey, I was thinking of you when I saw that first the one. First like, one okay. The first one, John Durham boss hit me up. It's like, bro, that was an Avant catch. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, AJ Brown, when, when you're catching the ball low like that with your hands and you're not trying to body it, you're focused. Like that is I'm focused in, in that moment. In order to make that play, you got to be extremely focused to make that play with your hands. And um, so that lets me know that he was focused. Um, at the beginning of that game, at least. And then Devontae, a lot of times, guys just – I remember having a coach one time. It was a ball thrown like that when I was in college. And he's like, dude, why do you jump for all of those balls? Like, you're not going to get to them. You're not going to get to them. Like, why are you wasting your energy? I'm like, you gonna, you, I'm going to get to about 60% of them, but you can't get to that 60% if you don't try at all, right? And Devontae Smith didn't give up on the play. The ball's a little high. Put that, put it out there, and gave himself an opportunity to get lucky. Gave himself an opportunity to get a to to beat the replay official, right? With that hurry up yeah. call, because mm -hmm. if he doesn't give max effort, the play doesn't get made. So those were huge drives, and it and it and it and it puts the pressure on 49ers and let them know like we're here to 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 play, and yeah. we had other opportunities out there because the defense defense came out and stopped them right away and uh end up getting a pick not a pick but um uh, the, the strip sack and had an opportunity to 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 the, with the ball on the 45 miss aj brown down the field like we had like three other opportunities out there to go up 14 nothing then they tied it, and then that's when we started but those two plays were like huge were huge yeah. plays to start the game huge yeah. Yeah, all my all my Niner buddies were crying about the play, and I'm like, "Hey, man, that's part of the game." Like Shanahan situation, if it's me fourth down, I'm throwing a I'm throwing a red flag no matter what. Yeah, right? that's on him. That's on them. So I think it was a great job by Devontae recognizing the situation, yeah, getting that quick huddle, 
and get in the playoff. So yeah, and it's a great call by the the if you you look at the 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 guy that has the play, he's in perfect position. But when Devontae reaches up and snags it, he turns I, it to the, the the official is seeing his back. He can't yeah. possibly see that ball. And I just I still after watching it. 15 times don't know if the ball actually hit the ground. Like it looks like it would have hit the ground, but I can't see clear evidence that it hit the ground. Literally it moves, but it doesn't look like it's moving on the ground. It looks like it's moving inside of his hand, which he probably thought, okay, since I don't have a secure, I don't have it completely secure. It must've hit the ground. Right. Which it yeah. probably did. It was more likely that it did and it didn't, but we don't know. But the, 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 the officials, we're in perfect position. The guy that's in the middle field is not going to be able to see that clean. There's nobody else to be there. It's, it's only the outside guy to be able to see that. So, yes, Kyle Shanahan, if, if he wants it, it has to, you know, throw a flag. Yeah. yeah. That's not the, that's the, that play, there was other plays that were the referee's fault that, that game. But that play was not the referee's fault. That looked like a catch in all sense. Like from his angle, the guy on the sideline, that, that I would have called a catch too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then on top of that, the, the defender kind of landed on him, right? So yeah, not only was it was hard to see, but the defender landed like right on him. So you can't yeah. really fault you can't like you said, you can't fault the refs on that one. Yeah, there were other plays. There were other plays that you were like, oh, hold on, bro. <laughs> in both games. <laughs> oh yeah. But you know what I hated the entire Kyle Shannon cried that in. Entire game, the entire game, just the entire blind. game, just crying about. I'm like, dude, they are literally committing these. Yeah, <laughs> these, these are not fabricated penalties. These are not like like just phantom calls. They're literally holding the entire play. Like he's holding him. <laughs> like it's Pat. They're ten yards down the field, coach. What do you? He faced mask the guy going out. What are you crying about? <laughs> he hit him out of bounds. He was two steps out of bounds. He hit him. What, <laughs> what are you crying about? Like, I was getting annoyed looking at his face like somebody was like cheating him. I'm like, nobody's cheating you. You are getting your ass kicked. <laughs> nobody's cheating you. Nobody told you to disrespect Hassan Reddick by lining up Tyler Croft, the backup tight end, on him. Nobody told – you watch multiple games, probably all of the games. He had 17 and a half sacks coming into your game, and you thought that that guy should be one-on-one -on -one with the backup tight end on a play action? And I – play caller. All of this and all of that, I lifted you up when I saw that. I was like, "Yo, bro, thank you." <laughs> you made Garoppolo smile. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> Garoppolo ain't smiled in seven games. Garoppolo over there, like we we got it. <laughs> We yes and got <laughs> Oh my god, man! And Trey Lance, stay over there on the sideline. Like, see, mm -hmm. I told you, I told you so. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> is over there smiling down thirty-one-seven over there, kick, kick, key, key in over there on the sideline. <laughs> All right. Oh man. All right, so let's see where we at now. We kind of we kind of talked about the yeah the scheme. We're gonna go over that. We're gonna go over that play a little bit later with Hassan Reddick. Okay, and we'll go more in detail, right? So let's move on to the next one. So, um, when when Brock Purdy got hurt, in your mind, is the game over at that point? I won't say. I remember he's he's been able to manufacture offense with a lot of guys, so I don't say it's over. And I know Jack Josh Jackson. Um, yeah, it's crazy. That's my flag football quarterback when I got when I first retired. <laughs> what <laughs> really? Playing flag football, just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he and he balled through that whole thing. And the next thing I know, he was back in the NFL. I was like, That's yo, crazy. I was like, flag football gets you back in the NFL. For real. But I know him. I know him. And I know he has a he has a hold. He can throw. He can throw better than Purdy. 
His arm is stronger yeah. than every his everything. Now I his deci- his decision making and his ability to, to handle the pressure, that's a totally different thing. But just pure arm talent, he can throw better throw the ball better than Purdy and more accurate. Um, yeah. but it doesn't make you a better quarterback. Yeah. So I so I, I wasn't saying it was over with, uh, but I knew we had a higher chance, a much yeah. higher chance, you know. So once once I begin to realize, like, so the first couple of plays of the game, the tight end McGlinchey got beat on the up and under clean by, by Hassan Reddick. The next play, Juszczyk blocked him one-on-one, and he would have made the play, but somebody else made the play first. And then Tyler Croft. I was like, boy, this game may be over if this is your, your game plan coming forward right now. Because your left tackle, I mean, your right tackle can't block him because he can't block because he beat he beat him clean like like, like he ain't even seen him. it was like that you know beat him clean and then your next line of defense is tight ends and fullbacks to block the best pass rusher on the team I was like that that may have been the, the sign it was like oh this game is gonna be a long game for them <laughs> yeah and see that's my thing like we were talking about it last week like I know I know you like Shanahan's offense. And I, I do think that has its place. But for me, I think it's it's relies too heavily on boot action, play action, and yeah. guys not being aggressive, right? And we said I said in order for this defense in order for the Eagles defense to um come out on top in this game, they have to play aggressive. Yeah. And it's a it's a lot like um like the zone read schemes in a way where you're relying on people slowing down, right? Mm-hmm. You're relying on they don't know where the ball's at. They're sitting in there. They're sitting there reading and waiting, and that's what this scheme is based off. So, um, the thing that I was really surprised about with with Shanahan and we'll continue at this, but the first play came out and it was almost like like old school West Coast offense. It was drop back game. So I was like, okay, is he going to change it up a little bit? And then he kind of reverted back to his normal scheme. But the thing that that surprised me the most was that they didn't try to come out and establish the run right away. The run game, for his offense to work, the run game has to be on, has, has to, to be, be yeah. even if you're not getting, even if you're getting one yard, two yards, you have to continue to run the ball. And once I saw them come out passing them, I guess over. It's a wrap. Over, yeah. <laughs> I still, I still going to give him credit because I still think he's, you know, top top two, three play, play callers in the league. I, I, I just think that, and I think highly of him. I'm not going to totally – Killing because you know he did lose a quarterback, both quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. So it was a tough day for him, and you know Brock Purdy was was completing passes, and um, you know so I, so I'm not going to be totally against what happened, but I will say this is that that was an idiotic move by 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 coming into the game plan thinking that those guys were going to be able to block a side right? That was that was <laughs> that was a bad that was bad that was bad, and it wasn't scheme. It wasn't like there was stunts. There wasn't mm-hmm. like it was anything, but that was athleticism. Yeah, he was he was better than your guys. Straight up, <laughs> yeah, straight straight facts. Mojo, Mojo is building the sports stock market where you can invest in your favorite players. Invest in what you know. Turn your sports knowledge into real money with Mojo, the sports stock market. Real stats, real value. Shares entitle you to a guaranteed payout based on career-ending stats. No off days, no off-season. Share prices rise and fall constantly in real time based on career-long projections. Cash out anytime. Build a portfolio and buy and sell on your terms. Every play, every game, or every season. Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS by just downloading the app. You have a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Click the link in the description for a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Must be 21 years or over and physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. Have a gambling problem? Please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Q. Mojo is for this week. Mojo's players, Kenneth Gainwell. Talk about like how well Kenneth Gain. He's like, he's like Jamal Crawford off the bench right now. Yeah, <laughs> he like Lou Williams off the bench. He instant offense right now. 
He is, man. He gets in the game <laughs> like a little little spark plug, man. And, you know, he came in the game because there was a little bit of a stall before he came in. Came in and ripped off a couple mm-hmm. nice runs. He's fast, man. Like, I knew he was fast, but he's he's fast and quick. And he 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 don't hesitate. Like, he looked good out there, yeah. man. So, yeah. yeah so he had 20, 20, yeah, 26 uh, carries yeah. for 160 yards this postseason. Nice. Six, six, six yards of carry. Six yards of carry. <clears throat> Excuse me. He called himself Playoff Kenny. Oh, what's going on here? Playoff he Kenny. Playoff Kenny. I kind of <laughs> like that, right? I mean, you know, you're a young buck, you know. I kind of like Listen, it. Listen, he play all, he, he want to be Playoff Kenny. Let the man live his playoff. <laughs> he looked like Playoff Kenny to me. Yeah, man. Like that, the, the, run, the run where he popped out of the tackles and just kept moving. I was like, yo, that looked like it should have been nothing, but boom, boom, yeah. boom. I was like, oh, he. He he in the groove. Yeah, he can go. He, All in, right. the, he, he in the groove. Hey, <laughs> you know what's happening right now? And you know what's happening right now? We can't pay everybody. Nah, don't. Uh, let's he's, wait to have to. He's, he's, <laughs> I don't want to start. No, listen, about. I got to talk about it because <laughs> we can't pay everybody. We yeah. can't pay everybody. And at the most inopportune times, Miles Sanders is taken out of the game. Like sometimes I'm looking for him. You ever yeah. know you noticed mm-hmm. that? I'm yeah. like, why is Miles Sanders out of the game? I noticed that too. You know, so they're making sure he's getting reps for a reason. You getting him ready? You getting him ready. Getting so ready. there may be a player that you there may be a player that you need to look out for on the other side. When you look at the, the Chiefs and the, the Bengals game, there's a guy that was just like Kenny Gainwell before the Chiefs, and that was South Jersey's own Glassboro, Vineland area own yeah. Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, man. He was He's... he was running, he was running tough. You see, he was running angry. I was like, I would want to get in front of them knees moving like that. Man, he 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 runs hard, he runs physical, he runs angry. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be good, man. And he's like you said, he's another guy that he he's young. He moved into the starting role. Get him while you get him now before, because you know how it's gonna go, yeah. man. He's gonna get about in Andy's offense. He gonna he gonna rip off. He gonna probably like two or three years. They are gonna start looking for somebody else. So if you get him right now, hold him for two three years, get all that money off of him. And then just move on to the next. So I, I think he's gonna be something special. I like it. No. Oh, nice. Yeah, that that'd be no. I, I like it too. I like it too because he he with Andy's running backs, they get a lot of catches too. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, they get a lot of catches. So you're looking at a guy that can have between nine hundred and thousand yards, but then end up with another five, six hundred yards receiving. You know what I mean? Could possibly be. Okay. Just with check downs, <laughs> maybe maybe four or five hundred yards receiving. But yeah, boo, check down. So you get some value there. So those are the two guys. Make sure that you guys are checking out Mojo. It is the player stock market. Make sure you guys are checking it out. Win some of that money. Always think about the backup quarterback. Look at Brock good. Purdy. Look at Josh Johnson. You should put Kirsten McCaffrey at quarterback. And uh, they got to come up with a solution. I guess going forward, Q. Teams are going to have to have a utility player just in case something like that happens, like a quarterback that's slash receiver or something that can get you some value. But you can't, you can't, yeah, that that right there was crazy. You don't have to. And then and they're talking about going 18 games. Oh man, they need to stop playing. That's crazy. NFL getting too greedy, man. Don't water down the product by making more games. Don't don't make don't water like we got we had we had it good with 16 games. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay, NFL. It's okay. We don't want to. This is not basketball. This is not ba- – people get bored. People say, oh, it's going to be another game tomorrow. I go I go to it then. It's 162 of them. It's, 80, hmm. it's, it's 82 of them. That's crazy. Yeah, uh-huh. you don't want that. You don't want that. Keep it, keep, keep, it, keep it low. Make it exciting. There you go. Yep. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's go. You got this one. Were you, are you like, um, 
are you are you amazed at Hassan Reddick and how well he's been able to get to get to the quarterback? I mean, I I this has been my first this has been my first year really seeing him play. I, I knew coming out he was a good player. Um, I watched him a little bit when he was with the Cardinals and kind of lost track of him. Um, but I I didn't expect this out of him this year. I mean, he he especially early on, you know, we weren't sure what Gannon was going to use, how he was going to use him. He had mm-hmm. him dropping, he had him all doing all these weird things. And uh, you know, very very early on, I was like, I don't know. And then he just he just hit a hot streak and I don't know. He just got freed up to just be creative, um, use all his different rush moves. You know, we talked about it on here, his hand movement is his speed, his athleticism is just tremendous. And so, um, you know, he, he's, he's probably, you know, obviously for me on the defensive side, he's my favorite player. I said it last week. He's my favorite player to watch right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I believe that he's a great, I believe he's just a, just an absolute addition. Um, great addition to this team. Um, Super Bowl, Eagles versus Chiefs. <laughs> How do you feeling? Because you know Andy, you are Philadelphia Eagle through and through. But the guy that, you know, gave you your start is on the other side. Like, how do you deal with this? This is tough. For, this is tough for us. I'm going to eat like, look, we Eagled out. This is what we, this is what we are. But listen. It's tough when you have your mentor that kind of molded your career and shaped the way you think about football on the other side. You don't want to see that person lose. That's why I just wish the Bengals would have beat. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing in, in the way I'm, I wish the Bengals would have won because then you can you can openly you know just hate them. To everybody out, you know. Just, yeah, you can like, wish people get injured. Like <laughs> it's just different, man. It's and, different. Because <laughs> Andy, Andy, you can't even be mad. You can't even be like, you, like if, if when when the Eagles beat the Chiefs, I'm still gonna be sad. I'm gonna be yeah. happy, but I'm gonna be sad. Yeah, man, it's that's you know, a tough one. Yeah, just tough. So, how are you? So let's let's say game gets, you know, gets down, gets to the end of the game, right? right? It's a close game, right? And Th- this is the thing. Say, <laughs> the only way this game is close, this game, this game, this game may not be as close as what we think it. it like it may. Mm-hmm. It's it's either going to be a a the only way the only way the Chiefs can possibly win is 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 co- is is a very narrow Patrick Mahomes extraordinary, uh, like otherworldly performance. Everything else is leading to an Eagles decisive win to me. Okay. That's what I think. Because there's, I, I, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Finish it up. Because when you think about this, look, Patrick Holmes is the best quarterback in football. Mm-hmm. Right? Top mm-hmm. two, top three, whatever. Jalen Hurst is not on his level, but Jalen Hurst is at the MVP level. There's a step down there, so you give that to you give that to Patrick Mahomes. Okay. okay. Travis Kelsey's the best tight end in football. Mm-hmm. But it ain't that big of a step from Dallas Goddard. Travis mm-hmm. Kelsey's better, but it ain't that big of a difference. Our mm-hmm. offensive line is ex- way better. Yeah. Our receivers, because of their revolving door and guys that are uncertain about getting open. MVS has a game here and there. Judy Smith has a game here and there. McCall Hart. You need all of these dudes because you don't know who's going to show up. Tony here and there, you don't know. Our guys are established. Our receiving core is better. Right? Yeah. Our our running backs are better. Yeah. At Boston, Gamewell, and Sanders. So in their best area, which is offense, we're better. (laughs) Then you look at their defense. What area on their defense that we're not better than them in every position? Every position, our defense is better than their defense. In every position, from D-line to pass rush to linebackers 
to like our linebackers are better than their linebackers. Yeah. Our yeah. our safeties are better than their safeties. Our corners are better than their. So when you look at the game, like it's only it's going to be a Mahomes miracle or Eagles decisive win. I agree. <laughs> once you put it like that, I can't, once you put it like that, I got nothing to add to it. <laughs> like you're right, you're absolutely right. Now, 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 here's the here's the thing that we're not we're not putting into the equation, which goes a long way. You give Coach Reed freaking two weeks. You give Spagnolo uh, uh, two weeks. That's a tough ask for any offense or defense. Veteran coaches versus young coaches. Will that play a factor in this? But when you look at the talent level, if the players are deciding and the coaching is even, the Eagles should win. When you look at the talent level in coaching and the years in experience, will that come to bite us? I hope not. Okay. Because you got, you got, you, you have extreme coaching experience on the Chiefs from Dave Tobe. Oh yeah, to, those, yeah. To to Coach Reed, their quarterbacks coach is Matt Nagy, who's been a coach in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy's yeah, been a player and a coach in the NFL. Like their whole staff has like years upon years of coaching experience. A lot of guys that have that have that have been coaches before it somewhere, and as well as their um, Spagnuolo under Jim Jim Johnson, years of coaching experience, right? Years. Mm -hmm. So that could play into it, but if the game comes down to talent, we should win the game. Okay. But I'm but I tell you this, I tell you this, Steichen, Gannon, Sirianni. Coaching staff, you better bring your lunch pail <laughs> and make sure that, that this game is not won by coach. <laughs> this is I'm gonna tell you, this is one thing that I'm looking for. Sorry, I'm I, sorry I took I took I took a lot no, of time. No, 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 you good, you good. There's two plays by this offense that I'm gonna be looking for because I know they're gonna run them. And we talked about it before. The dash pass, how they get to it, all these different ways. You know what I'm talking about? You're talking about like dash, the... It's like the sprint out where you get the guy to the oh, flat. Oh, oh yeah, 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 it's Q8. Sprint option. Okay, so that play I'm looking for, and then the shovel pass because I know they're gonna run it. It's <laughs> in the ten yard line. At some at some point, and he's gonna get to it some weird kind of way. I just want to see this Eagles defense make a play on one of those plays. <laughs> oh, they get everybody and everyone knows they're gonna do it. Everyone yeah. knows when they're gonna do it. The pa the pass rush got to be able to get some homes and make them uncomfortable, like 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 Tampa did a couple years ago. That that right there is how you win this football game. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and 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 figure out a way what you're gonna do with Kelsey. If you can, if you can make somebody else beat you besides Travis Kelsey, you 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 you're doing good. But that dude's a monster. He's a beast, man. You, you he's uncoverable. You know what makes it, and we'll, we'll, I'm sure we're gonna go yeah. back into. But what makes it so hard is they don't even be running real routes sometimes. Like it, <laughs> they'll just look at each other, and he'll just like run like a half slant, half yeah. Dig half <laughs> his touch. He was running the corner route on his touchdown. He was running the corner route. He saw Mahomes in trouble as soon as he began to slow down. He didn't redirect yet. Soon as he slowed down, the ball was out because he knew that he was coming back down his stem and back to him. And there, it wasn't a part of the play. But they've been playing together so long is that he saw that he recognized that he was in duress and and, and Kelsey saw him. They looked at each other. Up, oh, I'm coming back down. Touchdown. It, that's crazy. You can't that's defend just, that. Let's get yeah. 15 postseason touchdowns. Him and Gronk wow. are tied. No, wow. second in NFL history. Number one is Jerry Rice with 22. Can you imagine this dude beating Jerry Rice's touchdown record? I'm not saying in this game. I'm just talking about over his career. If he played three, four yeah. more years, you know, that'd be crazy. That's that's, crazy. That was unheard of. That's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That means you got to play a lot. You got to play a long time in the playoffs. You got to win games. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So next, next section, let's go. Uh, Chiefs open as one-point favorites. For 
<laughs> for an hour. For about an hour. <laughs> and the line moved to the Eagles being favored. Who um, we just kind of talked about that, but who's the better team? Better team the better the better team, overall team, is the Eagles. Yeah. Like to me, I, I don't see how you can I don't see how you can put that in question. Yeah. I, I really I really don't. Now let me ask this. No. That doesn't mean that you're gonna win the game. Right. Because the Bengals were the Bengals were a better team than the Chiefs. Right. Let's put let's add the coaching aspect into that team. Who's the better team now? Or how does that affect the balance? That affects the balance and it makes it it makes it it because and, and here I don't want the fans to get discouraged. But I want you to think, I want you to take your Eagles brain and turn it off. And I want you to take your Chiefs brain and turn it off. If you were given, if you were given your pick of offensive coordinators in a fantasy football draft, Coach Reed's going to be in that top three people. Will Shane Steichen or Nick Sirianni be in that top three picks? Mm -hmm. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if you're in a fantasy football draft and you say, hey, give me a special teams coordinator, I bet you Dave Toe's name is going to be in that top five picks. Mm. Good point. Yeah. Now, I don't know where Spagnuolo will rank, but because of his history and because of, you know, people that are around the league, maybe not with the fans or whatever, you say man, he may be middle of the pack in, in the eyes of the fans, but people that know football, he's probably going to be in that top ten category. Yeah. He's dumb. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm just saying people that know football, maybe not with the fans. Right, right. You know, so, so and then you do it and you do it in the reverse side. You say, hey, where, where do you think Nick Sian is going to be? Where do you think this is going to be? I think that you're going to say that the Chiefs coaching staff are probably better than our coaching staff. So okay. when you add that, when you add that into the equation, but coaches don't don't play games. And there was nothing that had to do with coaching of, of Hassan Reddick knocking Brock Purdy out of the game. They, they were, like, well, it was coaching because Kyle Shanahan did the dumb thing. That was coaching. But there was nothing defensively that Jonathan Gannon did that was heroic in that moment. That was just better athletes against, uh, against you know, that. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't think that was anything like, he. oh, oh. That was a great stunt. Oh, they ran, they ran a pressure. Like, no, like, he was better than them. <laughs> so if it comes down to that, we're good. You know, you just hope that that the mad sciences doesn't go go home and, and, and pull out a and pull out a humdinger from nowhere. <laughs> That's you know what I mean? <laughs> that, <laughs> That's I like that's that what I'm about because I want the Eagles to win. I want I want our team to win. That's the only thing that stresses me out is that we got Coach Reed with two weeks. Yeah. You know what that's like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? No, I'm 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 with you on everything. Um I, I think, you know, I think the coaching, especially in a, a big game like this, um definitely has an effect. Um a lot of I wouldn't say uh, um all, but a lot of the players on this roster now weren't on that Super Bowl team, right? So there's an experience factor there. So um, I, I think when it comes to the coaching, the experience factor being on the big stage, and then you you put in um, you, you put in uh, Mahomes, who can at any point kind of take over a game. And then you got um, Kelsey. I think that right there can tip the scales a little bit. Um, I do think this team top to bottom, this Eagles team is better in every position, like you said. Um, but that being said, you know, if there ever was an opportunity for this Eagles team to, um, you know, have an Achilles heel or have, uh, you know, something bad happen, it happen from a coach like Andy Reid and his staff. Like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully so that it'll won't be happen. good. It'll be interesting. <laughs> I definitely will. <laughs> All right. We 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 got way more. We'll give previews of the game. Let's get into this question, Q. Um, question from Anthony W. 
for Quentin. What the Eagles did to Fred Warner out of play? Um, this question is kind of worded pretty weird. I'm I'm gonna just make it different. So, what the Eagles did to move Fred Warner out of place? Like, what was what was it in the touchdown runs to kind of stabilize him or move him out of position? What caused Fred Warner to second guess to be out of position? Few. This is the touchdown run by Miles Sanders. I want you to look at where this ball is placed. They have the ball on the seven. Okay. The ball is on the seven yard line. Here is Fred Warner. Here's Greenlaw. Look at where the defenders are. The defenders are at the six yard line. Let's look at them. I want you guys to watch Fred Warner and I want you to watch where the defenders end up. Look at our offensive line. Watch the double teams that are taking place by Jordan Malata. Um, or 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 Kelsey and uh, and Lane and Lane Dickerson, and then look at the backside as well. Watch this. All right, look at Fred Warner. Who does Fred Warner have? You ask me. Yeah, Fred yeah, Warner. He's got the uh, pull, the QB. Yeah, he has. He has Jalen. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to that play. It's tough to to do this on this play, but look at these double teams. Look at these double teams. Look at these guys being pushed back. Fred Warner is here. Miles Sanders is right here. The ball is right here. But Fred Warner's eyes is on Jalen Hurts the entire time. So, therefore, he's nullified. He's not even in the play. Right? Yep. Number 31, making business decisions. <laughs> and then Greenlaw is definitely making business decisions because he's not even in the play. Also, look at where the safety is going. You got two people on who? On Jalen Hurts, right? And look at this movement. Beautiful. Beautiful. To have three walk-in touchdowns is unheard of. In the and they weren't from a yard away. These are from the seven, from the eight, from the ten. Like, that's tough to have walk-in touchdowns from there. Tough. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about this too is you is and this is what I was going to try to highlight earlier is the 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 um, defensive scheme which I think is beautiful the defensive scheme that they're expecting is RPO but that's just inside zone mm -hmm. so their 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 eyes are on Jalen thinking he's going to do like an RPO but that's literally just inside zone that's all it is. Yeah. And so you got the court, the linebackers eyes in the wrong spot and they're looking at the wrong things and they're stepping in there slow and they're vacating their areas thinking that it's one thing. And then the beautiful part is they come back in the second half and then they actually start running the RPOs. So it's almost like yeah. they, they had a, they had a, a stinking suspicion what, how they were, how the uh, Niners were going to play against this team and they said okay if you guys are going to try to take away our rpo game we're just going to play simple zone and then once they started to realize that hey it's just zone we're going to play more downhill then they started hitting them with the rpo which is really cool mm. that's a great point this is the play that q that you wanted to see this is the one that fred warner gets knocked out of the game the first the first play. yeah all right so another thing that's that's really cool so um miles sanders is in the home position so mm -hmm. what that does it doesn't give a tip to who's going to be the um, for the defense, who's going to be um, the RPO guy. Right. So right there now they're reading. So then let me read that. Let me, let me play that back one more second. All right. So he's in a home position, meaning he's in the pistol position. Yes. All You're right. Behind the quarterback. So now yeah. what that does is neither one of the ends know exactly who's going to be the read guy and who's going to be the, uh, um, the, the pull, like the, the guy that makes the quarterback make his decision, right? Mm -hmm. so they shift. Go ahead. Equal shift out of it. Now watch. Right there, pause. Now you see Warner adjust. So now he's like, okay, now I know the back's to my side. I'm going to be the pull guy. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead. Play a little bit more. Boom. Same thing right there, right? That's just inside zone. That's all it is. Double team, double team up. But the fact that the uh, Niners are playing this 
as if it's an RPO. It slows the linebackers down. They're not able to play downhill. They're not able to attack. They're standing and reading all the while mm. the, the two uh, double teams are in their lap. And they, by the time they get a chance to react, this is exactly what happened. They're too slow to react. Um, Miles Sanders is running full speed. Warner comes, he comes off to try to make a tackle and he actually gets hit pretty good. He comes out of the game on this play. And I actually think he was concussed on this play. Yeah, he was definitely concussed on that play. And that might have affected him for the rest of the game as well. But like you said, it was just a simple inside zone, double teams up. They're playing slow, they're reading. And while a team is playing slow and reading, they're getting their butt whooped. <laughs> mm -hmm. So here we go, right here. So you have 17 and a half sacks right here. You have <laughs> Croft, who's literally like the fourth tight end, but he's good at blocking, so he's in there. It's Tyler Croft, number 81. And somewhere in the world, Kyle Shanahan is like, yo, we're going to run a play action long fake that we ran last week unsuccessfully against the Cowboys. <laughs> and we're going to bring it to this game, hopefully a successful in this game. And when you do that, you leave a one-on-one -on -one with the tight end. You have <laughs> the play action happening. You got Debo going. This is cute. This was very cute. It was a great game. <laughs> this worked like a charm in practice. Like it looked good in practice. Everybody was like, "Ooh, we're gonna kill him with that one." Guess what happens? Boom. Boom. Now let's look at the replay of this because there's there's some coaching like te techniques here that kind of makes this game special. He's winding up most of the time when you wind up. Um, the quarterback is the the guy that's hitting this on the defensive end swipes down. Hassan Reddick know that he knows that he doesn't have enough time, so he stretches out his hand as far as he could, like a person that's sliding into a base, and just extends his momentum and cuts the distance down rather than just swiping his arm, which takes tens of seconds, right? So this is an efficient move, an efficient pass rush, because no way he should get that. Look, his hand is not moving down. It's just going forward. Because he's trying to, like, pass the, the baton to somebody. He's trying to, like, get in there. He's not necessarily – he's trying to get that arm. You get what I mean? Yeah, so that yeah. was just an efficient move. Look at it. Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. he, he's extended. He's made himself longer rather than just swiping down. You know, so that was just a great a great pass rush. But to leave that man one-on-one -on -one like that was just bananas. We can go over this a million times, Q. We can go over this a million times. There's <laughs> – Multiple plays we can go over, but that but those are a few plays that 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 were, and that's why I don't like this because in in all <laughs> in in all honesty and I, and you know I like Shanahan I do like him I do think but I think the the this scheme relies too heavily on the the fakes because I guarantee you when he designed this play he said okay I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the 17 and a half sacks right here, and I'm going to have a backup tight end blocking him. But aha, what we're going to do, I'm going to send Debo on a fake on a fake jet sweep. So that'll hold him mm -hmm. and make him respect that. So that'll slow him down. That's what I think. Yeah, happened. and that happens. Because there's some coordinators that, that tell him, you got to contain, you got to contain, you got to contain. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because if he did hand it off on that play, he Debo would have would have had something there. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Go. I don't care. It's over. The game's over. Yeah, Man, rest, we, you get arrested. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that goes in right into the next point, right? Is there something that Shanahan's offense that leaves the quarterback vulnerable? And th in those moments, if the the aggressor is going to win, now, if here's the thing, why are you running play action when you haven't established to run? Mm -hmm. So that's why earlier in the earlier in the Cowboys game, they were running, they were doing misdirection. They were doing um pitches and they they did they had a lot of good stuff cooking, right? In order to throw their, their defense off balance and be able to create some yards later on in that game. But 
Yeah, it wasn't his best game because you can't do a play action without the run and you haven't established a run yet. Why would they be respected? Like, you don't know what, what, what the team is really capable. If, if Debo gets that ball the first time now and he, and he runs for 20, now that play may be good next time. Yeah. But Sean Reddick was like, man, I'm going to get the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> F what y'all talking about. Yeah, forget what y'all talking about. I'm here for sex. Hey, you guys, that's the Q&A podcast. We went really long today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. We're excited about the Super Bowl. Can't wait to see the Eagles win the game. My heart's going to be a little bit heavy seeing Big Red get crushed by his former team. <laughs> it's going to happen. But I um, will definitely enjoy myself. You may see me greased up on a pole out in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> out there for the photos <laughs> oh man i saw a dude on the surfboard today oh, on man. social media <laughs> they turning up so but thank you guys for tuning in all year q you got the last words yeah it's been a great it's been a great season man and uh, it's been a lot of fun i enjoy it every week getting on with you and talking some ball man jay so it's been awesome always and, uh, fun brother absolutely and can't wait till next week man so let's go get it Let's go. We got at least one more show. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>